All right, everyone, here is the third and final part of the Nintendo Game Boy Player's Buyer's Guide. Uh, the next game we're going to is Super RC Pro-Am. It is a four-player game link game from Rare. Radio-controlled racing at its best. If you liked RC Pro-Am for the NES, you'll love the Super Game Boy version. Race solo or Game Link to go head-to-head -head in heated competition with up to three friends on the game's 24 twisting turning tracks. The graphics are good, the sound great, the play control excellent. The super competitive multiple player modes made possible by the new four-player adapter are especially fun. Next up we have Tecmo Bowl, and by the way, this is probably my favorite Game Boy football game of all time, if not my favorite football game anyway of all time. Um, is a two-player Game Link password backup game from Tecmo. And any a success comes to Game Boy. When Tecmo Bowl was translated to Game Boy, the designers must have said, why change a good thing? The Game Boy version of this great NES football game is as close to the original as it can possibly be. The teams are the same, and the passwords are completely compatible. The one drawback is that the 1988 player rosters may seem out of date. Every team has eight plays that reflect the strengths of those rosters. Next up, we have World Bowling, a two-player game from Romstar. His and her bowling. This two-player game captures bowling at its best. Bowl like the professionals and get a proper hook to maximize the chances of a strike and minimize the feared split. Watch the power meter and the control meter very closely and find a combination that works for you. The game covers six different countries, and when you bowl a strike, you will see a character unique to that country. Next up, we have Tennis, two-player game link game from Nintendo. This game is such a racket. This is a tennis game you can really love. You'll get your choice of four different skill levels and a complete arsenal of strokes. Forehands, backhands, volleys, and serves. One or two players can play. Either way, you'll need good eye-hand coordination. Moving your opponent around his side of the court and covering your sides are a crucial element in a winning game. And guess who the umpire is? It's your favorite mustache plumber. Next up, we have WWF Superstars, a two-player game link game from uh, Titan Sports and LJN, and Rare. Grapple with the best. Play tournament mode and take on all of the WWF superstars or game link with a friend for a strictly one-on-one -on -one match that lets you test each other's will to survive. Get up on the ropes and show them who's boss. Perform a special move if you have one. The Ultimate Warrior seems to specialize in throwing other wrestlers out of the ring. Choose your favorite wrestler and take your ability to the limit. And the last section, I believe, is strategy. And here we go for strategy. We have Battleship, a two-player game link password backup game from Milton Bradley. Sink a fleet with special weapons. Arrange a fleet of naval vessels and set your sights on your enemy's grid in this Game Boy version of the classic board game, Battleship. You can go up against a computer, controlled opponent, or challenge a friend to a one-on-one -on -one match. In addition to missiles, you have a limited supply of special weapons that can hit as many as five spaces at once or detect enemy vessels by radar. Next up, we have the Chess Master, a two-player password backup game from High Tech Expressions. Checkmate your mate with the Chess Master. The Chess Master is a great chess game for people on the go. It offers a challenge for the experienced player as well as hints in a demonstration mode for the beginner. The password feature is especially convenient when you only have time to sneak in a few moves. Play against a computer or hook up the game link for two-player fun. Next up we have Caesar's Palace, a one-player game from Arcadia Virgin Games. Dice up the competition. Cashier Susie greets you and the pleasantly supplies you and pleasantly supplies you with $1,000 worth of chips to play classic casino games. If you ever wanted to go to Las Vegas and not lose money, this game is a sure winner. Try your luck at the roulette wheel and the famous one-armed bandits. Try playing blackjack, and if the situation warrants a change of game and a change of luck, feel free to try another game of chance. Ish Ishido, The Way of the Stones, a two-player game link game from uh, Software Resources International and Nexsoft. Match the symbols of the Ishido Stones. The Asian board game Ishido is a test of matching skills. A set of 65 stones with assorted symbols are held in a pouch. The object is to pull the stones from the pouch and match their symbols with the other symbols on an 8x12 board. The symbols can be matched by either the primary shapes or by the backgrounds. You can play a game of solitaire, play against a computer-controlled opponent, or challenge a friend with or without a game link. Next up we have Power Mission, a two-player game link password backup game from VAP. Power of Fleet to Victory. 
In this strategic battle game, you command a small group of submarines, ships, and planes in a mission to eliminate an enemy fleet of the same size. With every turn, you can move any or all of the vehicles in your fleet into position. The only vehicles in your fleet that can travel over land are fighter planes. Play against a computer control opponent or challenge your friend to a game link battle. Next up, you have Spot, a one-player game from Virgin Games. Spot captures your attention. Spot is a challenging board game similar to Othello. Your goal is to control the board by capturing your opponent's pieces. You can claim your opponent's markers by moving one of your pieces next to his. Every time you move, all of your rival's pieces will become yours. Plan ahead, though. If you don't, you could lose up to eight of your pieces in one fell swoop. Spot flips and dances trying to cheer you on to victory. Next up, we have Shanghai, a one-player game from Activision and HAL Laboratories. Find matches for tiles in a pile. Tiles with assorted characters are arranged in a pile in this popular Chinese game. The object is to find matching pairs for all of the tiles. Each matching pair is taken away so that you can get to the tiles that were previously covered. When all the tiles are gone, you win. The Chinese characters on the tiles can be changed to letters and numbers that may be more familiar to a North American player. And the last game in this uh, section is Super Scrabble. It is a two-player game link game from Milton Bradley. Test your word knowledge against the Game Boy. Featuring a 40,000 word dictionary, this game pack will challenge even the most brainy players. Your goal is to earn lots of points by creating words with high value letters. The computer can be set to five different levels of play and it can take from one to five minutes to consider its next move. Remember, your remaining tiles will score against you at the end of the game, so make every move count. So that is the video game buyer's guide. Um, here you have the game pack index and exactly what it got rated. Power meeting rating. So you have G is um, Game Link. Or wait a minute now. How does it work? G is graphics and sound. Play P is play control. Uh, C is challenge and T is theme and fun. So Alleyway got a 3.3 for graphics and sound, 3.9 for power, 3.3 for challenge, and 3.2 for theme and fun. The highest you can get is a 4, I believe. Or the power meter max rating is a 5. So did anybody get a 5? As far as 4 and below, that's what we'll look at for games. Uh, Batman from Sunsoft got a 4.2 in graphics and sound, a 4.1 in challenge, and a 4.1 in theme and fun. And we'll also do 2 or lower. 2.0 or lower we'll go to. Um, the next game that's 4 or higher is Battle Unit Zeoth. It got a 4 for graphics and sound. The next one that qualifies would be... <coughs> well, actually, I should do 2.5 or lower because 2.5 or lower is half. So... If you're looking at 2.5, Balloon Kid got a 2.5 for challenge. Um, and then over here on this page, we have, for 2.5 or lower, we have Castleian got a 2.4 in play control. Castlevania the Adventure got a 4 in graphics and sound. Cyraid got a 2.4 in play control, a 2.1, which so far is the lowest score of anybody, in challenge. And here, Dead Heat Scramble from Electrobrain got a 2.3 in graphics and sound, a 2.2 in challenge, and a 2.4 in theme and fun. Disney's DuckTales from Capcom got a 4.1 in graphics and sound, which I believe right now is the highest, tied for the highest with Batman. You know, Batman is a 4.2 in graphics and sound. It's the highest score of any game so far. Um, then we got Double Dragon. Double Dragon got a 4.3 from Trade West, a 4.3 in graphics and sound. Um, then Dr. Mario from Nintendo got a 4.1 in challenge and a 4.1 in theme and fun. Extra Bases from Bandai got a 2.5 in graphics and sound. F1 Race from Nintendo got a 4 in both challenge and theme and fun. The Final Fantasy Legend from Square got a 4.3 in graphics and sound. The Final Fantasy Legend 2 from Square got a 4 in challenge and 4.3 in theme and fun. Um, 
Um, that's it for that page. Next up we have Gargoyles Quest from Capcom. Got a 4.1 in graphics and sound. Gauntlet 2 from Minscape. Got a 2.4 in challenge. Gogo -Go Tank from Electrobrain. Got a 2.3 in play control. Godzilla from Toho got a 2.4 in play control, a 2.1 in challenge. Golf from Nintendo, this is by far the highest rated across the board. 4.1 in graphics and sound, 4.3 in play control, 4.2 in challenge, and 4.3 in theme and fun. Next up we have HAL Wrestling from HAL, got a 2.4 in play control, a 2.2 in challenge, and a 2.4 in theme and fun. The Game of Harmony from Alkalade got a 2.5 in play control and a 2.4 in challenge. Hattress from Bulletproof Software got a 2.5 in challenge. The Hunt for Red October from High Tech Expressions got a 4.1 in challenge and 4.2 in theme and fun. Quark from Acclaim got a 4.1 in theme and fun. Loops from Inkscape got a 2.5 in graphics and sound. Mega Man and Dr. Wily's Revenge is by far the highest now across the board from Capcom. 4.1 in graphics and sound, 4.3 in play control, 4.5 in challenge, and 4.5 in theme and fun. And on this page, you have... Mysterium from Asmic got a 2.4 in play control. Nemesis from Ultra got a 4.2 in graphics and sound. Ninja Boy from Culture Brain got a 2.4 in theme and fun. Nobunga's Ambition from KOEI got a 2.4 in play control. Operation C from Ultra got a 4 in graphics and sound and a 4.3 in play control. Pac-Man from Namco got a 4 in play control. Paperboy from Minscape got a 2.5 in challenge. Then we have a Q-Billion from Sita got a 2.4 in play control. Quarth from Ultra got a 4.2 in graphics and sound and a 4 in each challenge and theme and fun. The Rescue of Princess Blobette from Absolute got a 4.1 in theme and fun. Revenge of the Gator from HAL got a 4.1 in graphics and sound, a 4 in play control, and a 4.1 in theme and fun. And the last page here, Serpent, this is pretty bad, from Taxan. 2.3 in graphics and sound, 1.7 in play control, 2.4 in challenge, and 2.5 in theme and fun. This is probably the worst overall rated game so far. Uh, then we have Snoopy's Magic Show from Chemco got a 2.4 in challenge. Solar Striker from Nintendo got a 4 in play control. Super Mario Land from Nintendo got a 4.1 in graphics and sound. Super Scrabble from Milton Bradley got a 4.1 for theme and fun. Sword of Hope from Chemco got a 4 in theme and fun. Tasmania Story from FCI is by far the worst game ever in this rating book. 2.1 for ga graphics and sound. 1.8 for play control. 1.6 in both challenge and theme and fun. What a horrible rated game. Tecmo Bowl from Tecmo got a 4 in challenge. The highest rated Tetris, by the way, from Nintendo, the highest rating so far given to any game in this book. Uh, it got a 4.4 in power, or 4.4 in play control, but a 4.8 in challenge, and a 4.7 in theme and fun. 4.8 is as close to a 5 as you're going to get. TMNT Fall of the Foot Clan from Ultra got a 4.6 in graphics and sound and a 4.3 in theme and fun. And then Wheel of Fortune from Game Tech got a 2.5 in challenge. Who Frame Roger Rabbit from Capcom got a 4.3 in graphics and fun. And the last of the list, WWF Superstars from LJN got both a 2.4 in graphics and sound and play control. 
Now it says, now go to the source for Game Boy games. The pros and Nintendos have packed everything you ever wanted to know about Game Boy games into one bestseller, the Game Boy edition of the Nintendo Player's Guide series. Use the complete directory as a buyer's guide to pick your next challenge from the growing Game Boy library, now topping 130 hits. Check out the power meter ratings and stats for your favorite games in the comprehensive index. Dig into the gigantic in-depth reviews on over 25 top titles written by the game pros at Nintendo. Find out how to ace the Joker, map out victory in Gargoyle's Quest, read it, line up new strategies for Tetris, and win. Get the muscle to tackle these Game Boy hits. New strategies, tips, moves, and maps are yours inside for these and other red-hot Nintendo Game Boy winners. Batman, Castlevania the Adventure, Dr. Mario, Disney's DuckTales, Final Fantasy Legend, Double Dragon, Gargoyles Quest, Golf, Gremlins 2, The New Batch, Nemesis, Operation C, R-Type, Revenge of the Gator, Super Mario Land, The Sword of Hope, Tetris, The Hunt for Red October, TMNT, Fall of the Foot Clan, the Ultimate of the Ruins of Virtue. There's strength in numbers. More Nintendo Player's Guides are coming. Keep your eye out for the most complete video game coverage between two covers. You'll have a winning collection. So folks, thanks for watching. That was the Game Boy Nintendo Player's Guide three-part segment. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. We'll see you next time.